Hello everyone, welcome to another video of creating 2D sectional drawing with dimensioning using Autodesk AutoCAD. Let's head over to the question. Now, in this question, we have the arm bracket presented in three, third angle projection. Uh, the question provides you with the front view. So your task is, for the first item, is to create your plan view which is here. Following that, you are to include a local sectioning showing the diameter 5 hole, which is here. So, this refers to this hole here. On to our item 2, we are to modify your front view into a sectional front view. Okay, so means we need to do some hatching along your cutting plane AA. Third item, we need to create all these dimensions. And to fourth, create all these cutting planes with a label at the bottom here. Alright, let's go into AutoCAD. So to start off, make sure you have launched your Autodesk AutoCAD software. Onto the starting page, click on Open Files. When you come about here, find the template that you have downloaded. And for this case, I have placed my template in the desktop. Okay. If you are not seeing anything, make sure that the file type has been changed from DWG to DWT. Okay. So let's repeat again file type. DWT. Let's go to desktop and double click on this item here. Let's press open and we can somehow see the whole item here. So to begin with, uh, as a rule of time, uh, it's always best to complete your title block. So to do so, we just double click on it to go into this uh, attribute editor. Since it's a engineering drawing, we need to make sure that all our letterings are in capital letter. So press the caps lock to activate it. So let's change the, let the name, your seven digit emission number, your class. Let me just put a invalid class and today's date. And for our venue and terminal number, you can change it accordingly and press OK to apply the changes. Next stage, let's bring this view. We will do a copy. Select this end as your base point and let's shift it somewhere in the middle here. So take note, okay, your front view is somewhere at the bottom here. So we will do the same. Press the escape key and before anything, let's do a file save. Let's save in desktop and but this time our file type change it to .dwg and press save. You will know that you have saved successfully when it's presented here .dwg. Okay, so let's recap. The first item here, we are to create your plan view. So let's begin with that. So let's create some construction lines. Okay. For this case, I need to leave a little bit of gap between your front view and your plan view. And this gap depends on how much dimensions is required or of you to be placed here. So for this case, this example, we have a few uh, dimensions to be presented right above the front view. So therefore, maybe I will do a little bit more offset, apply more offset when uh, creating my front, uh, plan view. So let's click on line, change this to construction. So let me start from here. I will do a tracing method. And afterwards, I will use offset 
change the value to 30. This is just an estimation. Uh, yeah, you can just change accordingly. If it's too small, uh, when we apply the dimensions, we can just move your plan view or your front view a little bit higher or lower. So click on this, bring it up. Next, let's repeat and draw a full uh, shape or boundary of your plan view. But how big will this be? How high must I go? So let's go into our 2D drawing. If you can see here, the outermost features are actually this base here. So from here, this is the lowest point and the highest point is here. And the dimensions that we need to take note of is 64. So let's line, call out the line function. From here, I will draw 30 plus 64. So it will be 94. Let's do now for this case, I will use tracing method. One, and then I will close it to the bottom base. Press escape to end the line command. And this is what we have as a boundary for our plan view. Uh, the next stage, uh, I like to do. I like to construct all my holes, all the center lines of the holes. So click on line. This will give me like some, yeah, some gauge where are all the main holes are. So this front hole, the diameter 20 H7 is my main hole. And also this uh, inverted counterbar hole is also sort of a main hole. So that's why I have drawn two construction lines. With that, I will also draw another center line about this midpoint here. Okay, so go to line, change the layer to center line, but this time we need to take half of 64, which is 32. Drag it horizontally, press the escape key, left click on your line, and drag 5mm both sides. Okay, we will extend it by 5mm on both sides and press escape. So this midpoint will give us a rough gauge. Uh, where is the main feature right in the middle? The reason is simple because in our question here, it looks very symmetrical uh, from the bottom with respect to the, uh, the top feature here. Okay, so they are symmetry about this center, center line. All right, we can start sketching now. So let's click to line. Outline, I will perform the square, the rectangles base. So let's begin here. One. From here, I will use the tracing method. Drag, 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 drag. To here, here, and here. Okay, so um, for my case, uh, I like to do it piece by piece. Means. If it's a base, I'd like to complete everything about the base and then I move on to other features. So with that, I'm, I am I can assure you that you complete all the features as for that portion and then move on to the next place piece of the problem. Let's press escape. Go to our drawing. From here, we need holes. Okay, four holes. At the same time, we need some radiuses. For well, the radius is given as 4 times r. It's not provided at all. So let's calculate it. 64 minus 48. Okay, so we need about uh, 16. Okay, so 64 minus 48 is 16. And we will divide by 2. And this radius here will be 8 mm. So go to fillet. Uh, as usual, when we first apply fillet or chamfer to in AutoCAD, we need to make sure to set our radius or chamfer value. So for this case, it's a fillet. We shall click on this radius and type in it. Then enter and select all these areas. Enter again to repeat the command, but this time we do not need to set up the value anymore because they have a default of 8mm already inside. Now, for the hole, okay, go to circle. We can use the center of this radius as shown here. 
see the radius starts from this center of the hole so we can use that as a reference so you can wiggle wiggle on this radius up you will have this center point that appears left click to apply the center of the circle but this time we will just use tracing method and we can get our hole now now all the holes are very similar it's just a matter of mirroring them up and then mirror them again to the other, other side so therefore i will just do one hole create my center mark and then i will do two times of a mirroring okay i will show you click on line change it to center line and from here to here space bar again to repeat from here till here uh, but this time i have to extend all these two lines by 5 mm too take note my center line is showing only a single continuous line our center line line type must be long short and then long so how shall we convert this left click onto the line to select it right mouse click and click on properties when we come about properties look out for this line type scale if your autocad shows this column the first column as being too small just make sure that you go in between the columns until your icon changes to this and drag it so that you can see the full description of the first column look out for this line type scale and change it to 0 0.5 and you can see it long short long close our property function and now we will perform match property so enter m a match property and we will repeat this command for the horizontal center line press the escape button right now let's do the mirror for the top starting from the right side of the hole left click and we drag to the bottom left side click on mirror now the command says specify your first point of mirror line our mirror line is this mid center line so one two do you want to erase of course no we would like, we would like to keep the original drawing now same thing for this guy let's select them again and mirror it again about this vertical portion yes oh sorry I should have pressed no let's undo and repeat the whole thing again select your entities that you want to mirror click on mirror function change it to here and select no okay so that we keep all four holes together so with that we have completed our base next let's conquer the front part here so the front part here is made up of an arc and two lines two horizontal lines for my case i will just create a full circle and then using the quadrant here i will draw two horizontal lines okay these two horizontal lines i will just end it about this center line okay so we'll go to circle change our layer type to outline starting from here drag it to this end Okay, because we already have this construction line that gives us that end point. Now go to line using this quadrant here. Let's drag it, draw a horizontal line, spacebar to end that command, spacebar once more to repeat the line command and redo the whole thing again. We just need the right side of the circle. So let's trim this portion. So trim. Select these two lines as our cutting plane, face bar, and then we can delete the left side of the circle. Press escape, and we have some sort complete the, yeah, this portion here. Now, if you see here, we have a horizontal line 
that is in hidden line type. Another solid outline that represents this portion. Another hidden line that represents this portion. At the same time, we need to draw two circles corresponding to these holes and this diameter 5 hole corresponding to here. So let's perform that. Now, for this portion here, we can just trim it. Trim. Again, select our these two entities as our cutting plane. Place bar to activate and delete the edge there. We will click line again, but this time change it to a hidden line and draw this portion there. Space bar, space bar once more. Again, this portion is also hidden. Okay, this cutout from the plan view, you will not be able to see it. So we need to show it as our as hidden line. Get to here. And lastly, line again, but this time change our line type to outline. From here, do the tracing method. One, two. Space bar to end it. So we have drawn all the three lines, two hidden lines and one solid outline. Now let's draw the two circles here. So we'll go to circle, outline. Okay, they share the same center as this big arc. So let's click here as our center placement. And we do the tracing method again. So in this question, a lot of tracing method. Space bar to repeat the circle command. And again, tracing method. Quite simple and straightforward. Now, for the diameter 5 holes, it starts from this corner here and ends onto the bigger circle. So take note of this. A uh, common mistake that this diameter 5, you might even end to this uh, smaller circle or smaller hole. But it's not the case here because this diameter 5 exists on the bigger hole rather than this smaller hole. So click on line. Let's change it to hidden line. And do the tracing method. Touching from. Oh, I should not have done that, but never mind. Trace, 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 trace from here downwards. Okay. Uh, you can do the tracing method again uh, to repeat the other side. But for my case, let's do mirror to practice on the mirror function. So click on this uh, line as our object that we want to mirror, space bar, and we will mirror it to the opposite side. Do you like to erase it? No. Take note, when we do that, especially on a curved surface here, there is an extra piece of the object here or the line here. So just left click on the line and shorten it to make sure it's correct. Okay, so the front end here, everything is in. Uh, we are just left with our center mark, the uh, line here. So line, center line from here down. Escape, select that line, and we extend by 5 mm both sides. Okay, we are almost done. Uh, we just left with our threaded hole here, our threaded blind hole, and of course, these features here, a lot of circles. Uh, it's very confusing, so I will leave it for the last. And of course, this rip. So, three, three items to conquer. This is quite doable. The rib uh, is also doable. Only thing is we need to create the center segment here first before attempting this rib. So let's go to circle. Okay. For this case, I did not draw any lines, construction lines to indicate where is the center of this blind threaded hole. Same thing, we, we revert back to our tracing method. Once it touch this main midpoint, left click, and then apply another tracing method and make sure it meets horizontally to the center line. Left click once more. Okay, take note, my line outline is wrong. So let's change it. Left click on that line to select it and change this to thin line as shown in our drawing. Next, let's draw the 
smaller circle, but this time it's in outline. Wiggle wiggle our new line, a uh, new circle to get the center. Left click again, and this time let's trace it up. Trace, 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 trace and left click once more. Again, we just need another center line, but for this case, I can just copy this function here and bring it over here. So let's do that. So copy, select my base point. Let's select the midpoint of this portion. Press the shift key, right mouse click, midpoint. Okay, make sure you remove your shift key once you have done that. Left click here and we go to get the center. Left click once more to place that line copied up. Okay, so not all the time you need to draw new lines or new circles. Uh, use what you have and yeah, to, to quicken up your workflow. Uh, take note, all threaded holes have this small breakage on the major diameter. So we need to perform this. To do that, go on the modify function here. Okay, expand it further and look out for this symbol here. It looks like a battery. Uh, if you hover your mouse long enough, it will show the description break. Click on it. Let's zoom into this threaded hole. Click on it. Let's shift it slightly. Okay. Uh, it's always best to move your mouse away from the, the main circle so that you can gauge your break uh, more easier. So left click once more when we have a sufficient enough break there. Uh, please don't do it too small or don't don't do it too too large too. Uh, it's not correct for the track convention. So let's zoom out. Okay. Uh, as a rule of thumb, please remember to save. So Control S or you can just go to this capital A and click on save. Now let's perform the center portion here. So this center portion here has uh, one, two three four and one more five hole because this is a countersunk portion so five circles that we need to draw right so let's go into our drawing let's yeah just double confirm whether i got it correct so one two three four five five holes only thing is uh this diameter 56 is provided by uh, to us here okay diameter 56 on the larger hole so let me tell you why it's provided. So now in this portion here, if I were to trace it upwards and I will just do a dimensioning from here to here, you will notice that we did not get the full diameter 56 there. Okay. So that's why be careful here. You should not, uh, you can do all the tracing all you want, but Please pay attention as to uh, some features like circles especially may not be so straightforward here. So that's why the dimensions are given. So always use uh, the dimensions that is provided and draw it out. If not, you can revert back to your uh, tracing method. So from here, circle, make sure our outline has been selected. Change to diameter and key in 56. You see? This guy here is slightly smaller, and I will tell you why. It's because if you were to use a ruler and drag it down, it refers to this portion here. There's a flat feature for the rib here onto this diameter 56 circle. That's why this portion is slightly smaller here. So no worries. I will just extend it. Okay, to extend, expand this trim and select extend, space bar once more, and click again. Press the escape key, and this time let's draw two lines for our rib. Space bar to end it, draw again, to repeat here. And to double confirm, because our drawing has provided the thickness of this rib, it has 14 mm. Let's just do a measurement to make sure that it's correct. So let's call out the dimensioning tool and voila, we get 14 mm. Okay, so this portion, please remember, shorten it. And lastly, we need to trim this portion here. So 
expand this portion, trim, space bar once more to select all as our cutting tool and click twice. Okay, now let's draw the smaller circle. For this case, uh, this smaller circle is only interacting with another feature on the right side. So the left side is free. So this is the true dimension here, the true, true radius. So click on circle, outline layer, starting from here center, and do the tracing method again. Okay, and let's draw more circles here for this counter ball and counter sun hole. So circle here, track it up. Now for the smaller ones, space bar once more. Use your tracing method again to, and for this larger one, if we are looking from the plan view, miss from here downwards, we can see this circle. We can also see the smaller circle, but however, we could not see this larger counter ball hole. So that's why this hole, when we are drawing it, we need to represent it in our uh, in hidden line. So circle, change our outline to hidden, starting from the same center, and we will use tracing method. Trace, 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 trace. Make sure they are traced correctly. Just check uh, the plan view and your front view. Left click once more. And it doesn't look correct, so let's check our drawing. So our front portion here, remember when I drew the line, it goes all the way to the center mark here. So it needs to end here onto the second circle, not the first one, second one. So let's go to our inventor, uh, AutoCAD. Let's trim it. Go to trim. Click our second circle, spacebar, and delete the left side of it at the same time we need to remove this portion and this segment too so trim select these two lines horizontal lines as our cutting tool spacebar and trim it okay now we are left with one more center line here and another hole for this portion here so line center line draw it here to here escape and remember to extend it by 5 mm both sides and for this hole here let's just do a measurement here to here diameter 8 fine go to line and this hole is hidden so it should change the layer to hidden line it will start from this portion let's go vertically slightly extra since it's diameter 8, we need to divide by 2 and key in 4. And drag it horizontally until it touch. Let me see, the smaller circle. But with doing that, I have a small segment that is extended slightly. So let's drag it slightly small. And now I can do mirror onto this portion. Done. We have finished our plan view. So for our plan view, they also ask us to include a local section here okay, of this diameter 5. So to do that, under this draw, call out this spline fit, change the layer to thin line. Okay, so because any breakout must use thin line, so we will do wiggly lines here. So one, drop down slightly, two, Another slightly three and then four four lines and space bar we have to trim the top and the bottom here so trim space bar once more to select all and click here and here and doing so we just need to mirror it to the opposite side so let's mirror select this object one and space bar to trim it take note again because this is a curve, we will have this extra action. So trim, space bar once more to select all and delete this top segment. Uh, for any hatching or section view, 
your hidden features will become yeah, solid outline. So let's select these lines and convert them to outline. And lastly, let's apply the hatching. So click on hatch command. Remember to change this uh, pattern to user define using the specs from your question. Uh, angle of 45 with a spacing of 2 mm. Uh, lastly, click on these properties and change it to hatch line. And we can select our region now. Once we selected these two regions, press the enter key. And then we have finished our plan view with our local section. Uh, before moving on to the bottom here, okay, if you can remember our item number four, it requires us to draw the cutting plane AA. So let's finish up whatever is on the plan view and then we move on to the front. Okay, so for this cutting plane that is to be drawn here and here, we need to use polyline. So click on polyline, change the layer to cutting plane. So from here, just wait a while, a little bit here, move it to the left and enter 1mm to give the offset between that center line and our starting point. And for this case, let's go to width and key in one spacebar and the ending width one spacebar. And let's give it a, a horizontal length of 15. That's a spacebar key and we will be drawing an arrow key, an arrow that is starting from this midpoint. So spacebar once more to start the polyline command. Press the shift key, right mouse click, and select midpoint. Click on this triangle. But this time, our width must change. So our starting width is 0, and the ending is 3. Drag it vertically down, and key in 8. And our next width, we need to draw a, a vertical line. So click on width. And our line will be 0 starting and 0 ending. And let's give her the length of 15. And therefore, we have completed this cutting plane. I mean, with the arrow. We are missing, however, the label here. So click on plane, a uh, text, sorry. Let's change it to text. Starting from this uh, top left-hand corner. And we will drag it to the bottom right-hand corner. And just type in A. So take note, your label must be in capital letter. But this letter is uh, the same size as our dimension lines. Okay, so we need to enlarge it. Highlight it first. Okay, inside this text editor, change it to 8mm. And enter. Uh, press outside to exit it. Uh, this time, let's just click on this corner here to shift it or centralize it with your arrow. Uh, we are, we have to do the other side. So to simplify the whole process, let's highlight these arrows, these polylines and the text. We choose copy. Okay, now they ask you where is the base point. So from here, move to the left a little bit and key in 1mm because we want to have another offset from the center line to that portion having 1 mm gap. Now we are missing with the label for the front view. So click this existing text. Let's copy that to the bottom here. You can place the label uh, either on the bottom of this front view or the top of this front view. But take note, do not place it right in the middle here because it might confuse people that this label belongs to the plan view. So uh, to prevent any ambiguity, yeah, placing it at the bottom here, for this case, uh, makes sense because yeah, there's not, no other view on the bottom. Uh, now, let's hover over the text, double click, and change it to A, dash, okay, space first, then dash, space, 
if you get this kind of like three layered or two layered uh, tags, don't worry. Still in the text editor, go to the bottom right hand corner here. You see this slash here. Left click on it and drag it sideways. And with that, we have completed our item number one and number four. So next is our uh, sectional view, item number two. So our sectioning portion here, we are cutting along the center of this piece. Uh, by doing that, we are cutting on this main hole, okay, the counter ball and counter sunk holes, this threaded blind hole, and this portion here. Okay. However, it doesn't cut these holes. Okay. Uh, since it doesn't cut it, we have to remove it because there's no point to it. We can, however, just keep your center line there to make sure that uh, it gives an, the other uh, viewer of your drawing that there are that the, the hole exists about this area here. Next, for the rib, we shall not section it, okay? But this portion have to be cut off because that is the sectioning portion. So let's shorten this. Uh, same thing for this area here. Okay, this is a hole, diameter 8 hole, but this portion here is solid, there's material, and this portion here is also solid. So it doesn't make sense to have two regions of solid piece uh, having a solid outline dividing them. So left click and let's shorten them here. And for these two vertical lines, since they are separated, let's just delete them because yeah, uh, they are not required anymore. So again, any sectional view, we have to convert the hidden lines to solid outline. So let's mesh property everything. And A, select your solid outline first. And let's move, change the others. So this is a, a quick method that you can change everything that you want. Again, our this hole will also be solid. And here and here. For this diameter 5, since we are cutting about here, and this arrow is, shows our looking position, so means from bottom upwards, this hole will be seen by, yeah, by us. So we need to change this to solid outline. If this hole, diameter 5 hole is on the opposite side, then it will be deleted, uh, since we can't see it. Uh, this portion here after sectioning will not be seen at all. For the threaded portion, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but to simplify it, let's just highlight everything first, change all the edges to solid outline. But looking here, our major diameter has thin outline, so therefore it should follow, yeah, follow together. So let's match property again. Select your thin line and change one. Take note, this horizontal line must be in the solid outline. Okay, now let's begin our sectioning. Everything looks okay. Let's go and, okay. When we want to do sectioning, it's always best to hide all the center lines, hidden lines, our thin line, our dimensioning lines. It will really uh, quicken our process. Let me show you what I mean. So let's click on hatch. Let's focus on this portion here, one. Uh, by doing so, uh, in the track convention, we need to also hatch this region. So we need to click twice here. All right. So let's undo. Let's say I hide my thin line. Okay. Hiding this portion. Hide my center line. Okay. See all the center mark, center lines is missing, all gone. My dimension lines. Okay. For this case, there's no dimensions. But uh, in the future, if we are working with dimensions, hide them first because your dimension might obstruct your selection for the hatching and lastly your hidden line okay for this case that's not it's okay press the escape key let's press hatch again and with that we just need to select once and it will get selected again okay so but take note uh i'm have done it wrongly because for this item number two our hatch spacing is six mm apart Okay, the angle is the same, but the spacing is wider. So let's repeat again. Hatch. Let's just check. User define 45 degrees angle. 
It was spacing of 6mm and our property is hash line, so it's fine. So let's click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, if you notice just now, when I was trying to select this region number 4, this portion here gets highlighted. Uh, always try to click it first and then preview it again. So if you, you see here, it's not being selected. It was previewed as uh, being hatched inside, but once you select that region, AutoCAD remove this uh, portion of the hatch. So always click first and then view it uh, uh, truly. Now press enter to apply it. Uh, but take note, for this case, I got it wrong. You see, a rib should not be sectioned. Don't worry, let's just undo it. Control Z. Uh, for this case, since my this area is a problematic area, I will perform region 1, 2, 3, 4 first. So let's hatch, check, check. Oh, this one is wrong. 6 mm. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's apply this uh, four regions first. And then let's try applying this portion here. And hopefully it worked. Spacebar. See? No problem. The rib is uh, not sectioned. Even the counter ball hole is not sectioned. So yeah, we achieved that. Uh, we have done the sectioning. Uh, what's next is uh, activating all your hidden uh, layers again. Okay, to double check. Take note, our center line is here is incorrect. So we need to shorten it slightly because yeah, it's just showing a continuous uh, single line. So MA, match property. Let's click on here because we know the line type scale is 0.5 and let's just replicate it to the bottom here instead of uh, going into the property mode. Lastly, let's do the dimensioning. Okay, So dimensioning, click on this dimension. We just have to follow what is provided inside. So let's change the outline to dimensions. Okay, This one, you have to refer to your question. I will just apply. So for my practice, I will apply the shortest ones first okay, to give me where is it. Please do not be too close. Uh, don't be too stingy. Or don't be too generous. Don't go so far away from the boundary. So let's just give it somewhat like this amount. And next, I will just apply the 50. Yeah. Again, don't be too uh, stingy. It overlaps your original dimension. This is incorrect. Or it's a bit too far. The gap should be somewhat here. Just nice for easy reading. And next, we have this 32. Selecting here to here. And I need to select it on this arrow here so that the 32 and 50, they are aligned together. So left click once. Now from this center here to here, I have to be aligned with this dimension 12. Uh, so again, you see, I can use tracing method. And lastly, for this left side, I will dimension my uh, diameter 8. So here, yeah. let's move from left to right. Uh, I'm missing a radius here. So uh, let's uh, the angle 90 degrees here to here. Okay, uh, uh, M12. So outer or the major diameter here to here. A radius here. A diameter 20 H7 hole. Okay, I will use this 12 as my reference. So here and from the center of it to this corner here, a dimension of 18. Oh, I got it wrong. From center of this diameter 20 till here, it should be 18. Okay, don't worry about the 2 times R6, the 18 plus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.2. Let's keep it up first. Okay, let's apply all the dimensions first. So from here to here, spacing, spacing is important. 8, 16, from uh, this big cutout here. And there, uh, end to end, here. We are missing this R3. So this R3 is a bit unique. When you are applying it, 
don't move your mouse too far away. Okay, then you will get this curvature here. Okay, what you need to do is to replicate what is shown in the question. Just move your mouse in between this center of the arc and your arc itself, and you get it nicely done. Left click. Let's apply our diameter five. Yeah. Okay. So we have completed all of it. All the dimensions are uh, present. So let's press escape key. And this time, let's apply all our tolerances. So for our tolerances, we need to use this given dimension style. Okay. Fine. Uh, our tolerance text height must have a scaling of 0 0.8 mm. So our tolerance must be slightly smaller than the nominal value. So as you can see here, this is the tolerance. This is the nominal value. The text height here is slightly smaller than this nominal value. So let's do that. Okay, so now, since we start from left to right, let's do right to left now. So for this, 36. Left click on it, to select it. Right mouse click and change and go into properties. Using your mouse, scroll down all the way. Under this tolerance display, let me expand it slightly more so you, everyone can see it. Tolerance display. Since this uh, plus 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.25 and plus 0 0.1, I will use deviation. So take note, for AutoCAD, our tolerance lower limit is always set as a negative value, while the upper limit is always set in a positive value. So for this case, uh, plus 0.2, right? Uh, 0.25. So we just key in 0.25 because it's always positive. For the lower limit is 0.1. If you enter, you notice that our symbol here is shown as negative. No worries. Let's just go ahead in front of that 0.1, right on the front there, and key in a negative sign. So negative with negative, we get positive. And they convert it. But our text is the same height. We do not want this. So let's go into this torrent's text height, change it to 0 0.2, and enter. So it becomes slightly smaller. Uh, next, let's do this diameter 20 H7. For this case, we just need to double click on it. Press your arrow key, your left arrow key, to go to the left side, leftmost of the text field. Under symbol here, inside the text editor, Click on diameter symbol to apply it. Now press your right arrow key, key in spacebar, capital H, save. And click outside to end it. Press the escape key. Now let's perform the same thing, but this time is 18 plus 0 0.4 and minus 0 0.2. Uh, we can repeat the whole process again, or you can just match property these values here to here. So we can keep the scaling of 0 0.8 to here too. So MA, mesh property. So this is a source and click this to follow it. So press the escape key, left click again, scroll down all the way to the tolerance category. It is under deviation, but this time the lower limit is negative 0 0.2. So let's just key in 0.2 since the lower limit is always on the negative side. And our upper limit is 0 0.4 enter and let's check 18 plus 0.4 minus 0 0.2 with a tolerance text height of 0.8 mm good let's press escape key for this r6 is two times so double click again press the left arrow key two times of r6 uh, to follow it nicely, we, uh, as according to your question, just put a spacebar in between them. So 2 spacebar times spacebar R6. For this guy, same thing. Double click on it. Left arrow key and put a capital M right in front to indicate a matrix trap. Okay, 90 degrees is fine. Uh, 15 here is actually plus minus 0 0.15 so let's press escape key first left click then we will go into this uh, properties scroll down all the way into the torrents category and under the display change it to symmetry with a value of 0 0.15 enter 
But this time, please remember, change the scaling to 0 0.8 because tolerance value must always be slightly smaller than the nominal value. Press escape key. Uh, this 8 must be shown in diameter 8, so double click on it. Press the left arrow key under the text editor, symbol, insert the diameter symbol. Uh, anything else I'm missing? Let me just check. Uh, always good to check again and again. So R6, this is done. Then with the 5, 8, 16, 20, 18. Okay, all looks good. Okay, next, let's uh, study them and make it better. It means on the dimension portion. So if you see here, our 15mm, the extension line extends all the way across this diameter 8. Uh, this is fine because the extension line goes in between them nicely. It didn't cut it. Uh, one example that I want to show you is here, where the 18 mm here, the extension line cuts this diameter 20 right at the dimension portion here. So what you can do here, okay, left click on this diameter 20, select this centerpiece, okay, and you can see here I can move the dimensions left and right. Okay, I will go back to this original location, but this time using the, the tracing method, I will just move it, eyeball it to the left side. And with that, I can get this gap. The extension line travels in between the diameter 20 and the capital H7. Uh, another thing that uh, you need to look out for, for our 2 times R6, there's no extension line here. Well, on default, it's always showing this extension line. So how to get rid of this? Left click on this dimension, still inside the properties. This time, under the fit category, dimension line force, switch this off. Let's change it to off, and voila, done. And with that, uh, we can control S to save it again. Uh, take note, all your dimensions must have gap between the outline and your dimensions here. Let's just check, uh, do last minute check. Let's switch off our construction line so it's easier for us to see them. Everything looks good. Okay. All right. We have completed our figure one question. So happy trying.